The saying goes that when life gives you lemons, you should make lemonade. And that's exactly what these Italian entrepreneurs did. Bottega Veneta was founded in 1966 by entrepreneurs Michel Tadei and Renzo Zanjaro. Based in Vicenza, in Italy's northeastern Veneto region, the name Bottega Veneta means Venetian shop. So, if you've been wondering why I'm pronouncing Bottega Veneta the way that I do, then here you have your answer. Many probably pronounce it a little differently, like Bottega Veneta. People saying Bottega Veneta. But for this video, we've decided to stick with the original Italian pronunciation. From the beginning, Bottega's primary product was leather goods, and today their basket weave technique is world famous. So it might come as a surprise to hear that this was actually just a workaround to a technical problem. When Bottega first started out, its sewing machines couldn't work with most leathers. The machines were sourced from the local Venato region, and this region was famous for ready-to-wear clothing. Because of this, the needles were not long enough to handle the thicker leather typically used for handbags and accessories. This seemingly put Bottega at a disadvantage as they were not able to fuse more robust leathers. But while the obvious solution may have been to get other sewing machines, the innovative Michelle and Renzo had something else in mind. From then on, they only worked with delicate, thin leather. The bags still had to be durable rough, and so they cut the leather into strips and weave them together diagonally. This made the final product much stronger, and the now famous intrecciato weave was born. Intrecciato is Italian for intertwined or braided, and the woven pattern has since become a signature of the Bottega Veneta house. People loved it, and Bottega managed to create a unique look without needing to advertise its logo all over its products. It didn't take long for the label to go global, but some big changes were on their way. Bottega prided itself on only having interior labels. They weren't interested in monogram clothing and logomania, and their approach truly set them apart from other brands. It showed that they relied on their fine craftsmanship and materials, and it even inspired their slogan, when your own initials are enough. With it, they hinted at their, if you know, you know, ethos, and it helped them grow a loyal clientele. For a while, things were going great, but Bottega wouldn't be an Italian heritage label if there wasn't a bit of family drama. By the 1970s, Michelle and Renzo had opened up a Bottega Veneta shop in Manhattan, New York. They hoped the expansion would make them an international brand, but unfortunately, their timing was very off. Bottega presented itself as being high quality and low profile, but more and more people wanted flashy, vibrant pieces, especially in America. Bottega's approach didn't hold as much appeal anymore, and by the late 1970s, they were struggling financially. Founders Michelle and Renzo decided to leave, and they surprisingly handed the company over to none other than Renzo's ex-wife, Laura Bragian Motedo. She then took the reins alongside her second husband, Vittorio Motedo. Laura's decision was risky, but she believed that there was still a possibility to turn things around, and luckily for her, she would turn out to be right. But it wouldn't come easy. In the 80s, Bottega first gained a lot of recognition from famous artists and celebrities, and one of the brand's biggest fans was arguably Andy Warhol. He often visited the New York boutique, and he even went on to produce a short film for the brand too. Bottega was also embraced in popular culture, and Lauren Hutton famously carried a brown Bottega clutch in American Gigolo. Bottega would later pay homage to that moment by reviving the bag and bringing Hutton out onto the runway in 2018. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. By the end of the 80s, Bottega was beloved among the rich and famous, but it still had a long way to go regarding reaching a wider audience, and the logomania of the 90s didn't make that any easier. In the 90s, it seemed like all anyone cared about was logos, and for a brand that set itself apart by not using them, this posed an obvious problem. Laura had to be inventive once again, 
And so that's what she did. Up until then, Bottega had been known for its high-end leather bags and shoes. Now the time had come to try out something new. They adopted trend-driven design elements, and they created their first ready-to-wear line. While the collection was still high-end, it allowed them to cater to a wider audience. But it soon became clear that more would be needed. They didn't just need a new clothing line, they needed a new creative director. The person had to be creative and bold, and it seemed like they had found those qualities in the young English director, Giel Deacon. Giel had made a name for himself with his extravagant designs, so the rather sober Bottega taking him on seemed unusual. Laura knew a thorough revamp was needed, however, and she decided to take a chance on him. Now, what made her do that? Well, the story goes that during this consideration process, Laura saw one of Giel's sketchbooks, and in it, there was a funny drawing of a Budgerigar driving a Rolls Royce. We had this very unusual meeting with Laura Moltedo, Giel said. We were sat on the bed and a bit like, oh Christ, what's going on? I showed them my portfolio and Laura pulled out this sketchbook from my bag. She was hooked on that particular drawing, and from that point onwards, it was all totally fine. Unfortunately, we couldn't find an image of the drawing, but the parakeet story is now the stuff of fashion folklore. While the quirky sketch was, of course, not the deciding factor, it let Laura know that Giel was fun and she ended up hiring him. Giel was tasked with making Bottega cool again, but he soon went a bit overboard. It became clear that the new direction felt somewhat flat, and things eventually got so bad that Laura had to sell a majority stake in Bottega to Gucci in 2001. Now what? After buying up Bottega in 2001, Gucci wasted no time. They had big ideas, and to make those come true, they replaced Giel Deacon with the German designer Thomas Mayer. Now, before you feel bad for Giel, just know that he was immediately asked to work as a designer at Gucci, so it is not as if they just kicked him to the curb. Thomas Mayer was born at the edge of the Black Forest in Forsheim, Germany. Upon his arrival at Bottega, the company was doing pretty bad. It had failed to keep up with the 90s fashion trends, and it was nearly bankrupt. In a desperate attempt to make a comeback, they had given in to fads and showy logos, and Thomas felt that the company had lost its identity. To restore it, he immediately re-implemented Bottega's four core values. Fine quality materials, extraordinary craftsmanship, contemporary functionality, and timeless design. He waited four years to present a ready-to-wear collection, and instead focused on leather bags and accessories. His first design was a logo-free tote called the Cabay. The bag had been reduced to its functionality, and despite its $6,000 price tag, it quickly became Bottega's top-selling item. And then came his next mission, the revival of Intrecciato. He began using it on everything, from bracelets to dog bowls, and by doing so, he managed to pull Bottega out of debt and into profitability. Recognizing the importance and fragility of the house's heritage, Thomas also opened an entire school devoted to training leather artisans, the Scuola della Pelleteria. With these long-needed changes, Bottega was finally doing well again. Thomas had returned it to its minimalistic, artisanal roots, and in 2012, the company surpassed $1 billion in sales. Unfortunately, all good things eventually come to an end. The success was followed by consecutive periods of negative growth, and after Thomas's fall-winter 2018 show, his departure was announced. With Thomas gone, a new creative director had to be found, and in June of 2018, just two days after Thomas had left, Daniel Lee took over. Daniel Lee was raised in Yorkshire, England. Growing up, he dreamt of becoming a dancer, but he learned that his feet were rather flat. He ended up studying design at the esteemed Central St. Martins in London, where he completed internships at Maison Margiela and Balenciaga. After graduating, he briefly worked at Donna Karan and Celine, but he eventually quit his job and planned to take a year off to travel and reassess his life. His trip was unexpectedly cut short, however, when none other than Francois-Henri Penot called him up. Okay, a little background for those who need it. 
Francois-Henri Penot is the CEO of Kering, and Kering is the conglomerate that bought up Gucci in 2003. As Bottega had previously been bought up by Gucci, this makes both Gucci and Bottega subsidiaries of Kering. While the then 32-year-old Daniel was ready to take a year off from fashion, he only made it as far as Japan. He received Francois Henri's call, accepted the offer, and immediately got to work. With Daniel, Bottega was catapulted into the spotlight of must-have fashion, and he turned the label into an it-bag-creating machine. In the blink of an eye, his work created the new fan base of Bottega, and that all without the use of a single logo. Today, Bottega Veneta is doing well. The Italian luxury fashion house has been valued at nearly $4 billion, and it has managed to reach global brand status. The company is revered for its outstanding craftsmanship and high-quality, timeless pieces. And while it has always been celebrated for its impeccable leather goods, it has recently become one of the world's hottest luxury brands. Since November of 2021, Daniel Lee has been replaced by the Belgian Matthew Blazy. Blazy's first Bottega collection from February 2022 was already a success, and it truly felt like a refreshing start to a promising era of the billion-dollar brand. What do you think of Bottega Veneta's less is more approach, and could you ever imagine handing over your company to an ex-partner? Share it in the comments, and if you learned something from this video and would like to continue learning even more, then check out our channel for more inspiring business videos.